Okay, so we have just solved that problem, right? So this is our optimal solution. Our optimal price is a function of A, B, and C. If we would like to see how much money we may earn, we may also plug in P star into the um, objective function. We're going to get something like this. Again, the amount we may earn as the ma maximized profit is also a function of A, B, and C. Anytime when we solve a problem, we would like to uh, first verify whether our solutions make sense or not. That's also um, allowing us to make sure that our solution process is correct. And also through that kind of uh, analysis, we will be able to earn some knowledge from the problem. So let's do that. The typical thing that we would like to do is to ask what's going to happen when the parameters changes. For example, when A goes up, P star is going to go up. When B goes up, P star is going to go down. Oh, to see this, you may want to separate this ratio into two ratios, and then you will see that. Or, when C goes up, P star is going to go up. So that's um, economically answer why this is the case. A is the something like a base demand. When price is zero, how many people would like to buy your product? Okay, if A is larger, that means you are running business in a more uh, in an easier uh, environment, in an easier situation. Okay, more people naturally likes your product. So if A is larger, you are going to charge a higher price because you can do that to maximize your profit because people just like your product. For B is the uh, uh, it's just the reverse situation. When B is larger, that means the price sensitivity of your product becomes larger. Okay, Every dollar increment, you're going to lose more customers. So if that's a worse situation to you, your P star, your optimal price is going to become smaller. Huh? When people just do, like, does not li do not like your product that much, for C is another side, it's at the cost side. When the procurement cost becomes higher, naturally you need to you are forced to charge a higher price. Okay? So these three things all together or well, somehow verifies our solution and somehow provides some intuition to us, some interpretations to us. For pi or pi star, we may also do the same thing. We can see that when A goes up, pi star is going to go up. But when C goes up, pi star is going to go down. Why? Uh, mathematically, you can verify it. But economically, when A goes up, more people like your product. So you can earn more money. When C goes up, uh, the cost becomes higher. And if the demand side does not change, you can earn just um, little money. Okay? And finally, we may want to ask what will happen when B goes up? Oh. Typically, uh, we believe if P becomes higher, then the situation is worse. So pi star should go down when B goes up. But mathematically, how may we verify it? Oh. One thing we need to do is to do this partial derivative. Okay, pi star is a function of b. If we can find, if we can calculate this partial derivative, and then we can, uh, then we can check whether this partial derivative is positive or negative. If it's positive, then pi star will go up when b goes up. Otherwise, it will go down. So intuitively, we would guess that this is could be negative. Okay, when b goes up things are becoming worse and you will earn fewer money. Okay, You may want to verify this by yourself. Finally, oh, probably you want to ask is there any condition on A, B, and C so that the above solution becomes feasible or reasonable? Okay, P star looks like this and the pi star looks like this. A, B, and C, we know they are positive. And then you probably um, may 
Look more into this problem and ask yourself: When P starts like this, what's going to happen to your sales quantity? What's going to happen to uh, sorry, this is margin. What's going to happen to your sales quantity? And for these two things, oh, they must be non-negative, and that's going to give you some conditions for、um, your optimal solution. Okay, so. Go home. Actually, you are at home. Oh, spend some time to think about this. When P star is like this, how would you maintain non-negativity for margin and quantity? Oh, try to do the calculation by yourself. Okay, let's do another example about folding paper. So we want to solve this problem. Okay, just one、uh, variable. The feasible region again is convex, but unfortunately, the function now is not concave in general.、Uh, we can see this immediately because this is a third degree and third degree.、Uh, what's that? Third degree polynomial. Okay, for third degree polynomials, naturally, it looks like this or that.、Uh, in either case, it cannot be concave or convex. We actually don't need that, right? We only need it to be concave over the feasible region. If this is true、uh, over the feasible region, then the first order condition will still be sufficient.、Uh, will still be sufficient. Is it? Let's do this. V prime. Now、uh, we get something like this, and V prime prime we get like something like this. In the feasible region zero and two a. V is not always concave because V prime prime is not always negative. Okay, you may want to verify this. If you plug in d、oh, as a over two into V prime prime, then then you're going to see that it becomes twelve d minus eight twelve、uh, a sorry twelve a minus eight a and it's positive. Positive means Uh, curvature is upwards, so that's、uh, maybe convex but not concave. Okay, so we have、um, we are facing a situation that the objective function is not concave and is not concave over the feasible region. What should we do?、Uh, before that, let's look at the problem again. In this problem,、uh, we are maximizing v d、uh, subject to a constraint. Oh, and d must be within zero and a over two. So suppose a is two, we may depict the curve like this. The curve is indeed non-concave, okay. And in the feasible region, the curve is also non-concave. If we want to verify it, when a is two, oh, we can show that at three、uh, at the、uh, at two over three. Is a reflection point, okay? Somewhere here. Below it, actually v is concave, but above it, v is actually convex, okay? So anyway, we know it, but、uh, it's just that the function is not convex,、uh, concave, in the whole feasible region. But actually, we don't really worry about it, right? Because for this single-dimensional problem, all we need is a maximum point, and as long as the function is what、oh, is unimodal, oh, just there is just one local maximum, then that local maximum must be a global maximum. So、oh, analytically, let's see how to do this. At least we know the first order condition is necessary. It's always necessary. So even if it is not sufficient, it can still be used to find all the candidates. If a point is a global max, it must be a local max. If a point is a local max, it must satisfy the first order condition. So let's try this. V prime d. Let's set it to be zero. Then there are two candidates. A, a d must be either a over six or a over two. These two points satisfy the first order condition. So 
they may one of them may be global max. Oh, this is true forever. So, uh, one thing we may do is to compare their values. Immediately, you can see this is positive, but this is zero. So a over six is optimal or over this interval. There is still one thing uh, we may want to verify. For a over six and a over two, for those points that satisfies the first order condition, we may also verify their second order derivatives. For a over six, the second order derivative is negative. And uh, uh, this is a typo, this should be a over two. For a over two, the second order derivative is positive. What does that mean? Oh. For a over six, if the second order derivative is negative, then the curve must be something like this. And this is where the first order, the first derivative is zero, and then the second order derivative is negative. So this is the local max. For the other point, a over 2, oh, the curve must be like this. The first order condition and the first order derivative is 0, but the second order derivative is positive. So it is the local mean. If you go back to check the figure, you will see that immediately. So with first order condition, we have found a candidate, oh, A over 6 as a local global max. But because there are still constraints, we need to check those boundaries. Okay? Oh. Uh, in example one, we did not check boundaries, but for example two, we need. Why? Because in example one, the function, the objective function was a concave function. So a local max is a global max, that's all. But for example two, the curve is not concave. So first order condition is only necessary. So a local max, uh, this guy is a global max within the feasible region, uh, in the interior of the feasible region. So we also need to worry about boundary points. But of course, they are just zero. Okay? If you are thinking about the paper, making D0 or A over 2 simply gives you zero volume. So in that case, a over 6 is indeed optimal.